Um, our second speaker today is Abbas Arsalan, who has actually doesn't need much of an introduction. He's, uh, he's a staple on the speaker circuit, mashallah say. He's also the marketing director of Coca-Cola Pakistan and Afghanistan. I would now like to invite Abbas. Uh, Abbas, come on up. Please, welcome Abbas. Okay, this is working. Um, well, firstly, thank you very much. Um, and Madhya, that, that was inspiration. And Ishev, you are absolutely lucky to have a mother like her. So a big round of applause for Ishev, firstly. <laughs> it's such an amazing story of bravery, uh, of hope. I feel extremely hopeful and you know, whenever I will face a moment of rejection and dejection and dis despondency in future, which we all do. Uh, I'm going to remember this story. So thank you very much for sharing. Uh, so guys, um, and just a little bit about myself. Uh, I won't take too much time. Uh, I find myself extremely boring. Uh, so I bet I'm super boring to all of you. Uh, but because I have been invited by Umar, who somehow feels that I'm not that boring. <laughs> Uh, so I, with all my love and respect for him, I'm just going to take two minutes to introduce myself. My name is Abbas Arslan, and uh, right now my position is marketing director for Coca-Cola in Pakistan. And uh, this position seems great to a lot of other people, but I can tell you, every day in my life is, is not that great. <laughs> and I'm running around from one place to another most of the time, and um, I spend too much time in office. My wife hates me for this, and my kids miss me a lot. Thankfully, they miss me <laughs> because they're little. I think as they grow up, I fear the day that you know, they stop missing me. Uh, I, uh, most of the people who come to sessions like this, uh, I really appreciate and I admire them because they have a desire uh, to be uh, successful, to achieve something, to be better versions of who they are right now. I think that's really important. And I wish I had done that also when, you know, about five years, 10 years earlier. I still wish I can do that because I feel I have so much more to learn. So this session is not really about me or any one of us here. It's basically about you. So the most important thing we can do right now is firstly to give you a round of applause. Now we know that we, all, we are all here because we want to learn slightly more about success. And uh, Madhya mentioned uh, that success is relative. So, you know, my success, definition of success could be very different from yours, right? Uh, but having that definition in our mind should be really important. And, um, you know, one can always say, I want to be content and I want to have happiness and such vague terms that you cannot ever define. And that's fine, that's fine. Uh, but one of my, I remember the first day I went to Lums for my MBA, our professor walked in and he said, you know what, people come to MBA because they want to have better jobs. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Farah. <laughs> and we, uh, you know, back in 2002 when I was at MBA at Lums, so I had gone in because I wanted to have a better job. So better job means more money a better car, a better house, and so on and so forth. The problem is you're part of a rat race. Even if you win it, you're still a rat. So he asked us to take us five minutes only, or if you can do it earlier, better. But define for yourself what is material success for you. Yeah? Make sense? So once you achieve what you think is materially successful, don't ask for more. And that will be extremely liberating. So if you haven't done that already, I would request, because this is primarily about you, take a couple of minutes and think for yourself. Materially, what do you want? How much money do you want per month? Which car do you want to drive? What kind of house do you want? How many vacations do you need? Just whatever you want. Write it on a piece of, piece of paper. But when you, once you achieve it, don't ask for more. Can we do that? I know. I, I have failed, <laughs> but it's really powerful. Do you want to take a minute?
can I, can I answer? Material success is never ending process, I think. And it, it will it will actually uh, will build up with the passage of time. Uh, I'm 40 years of age. My material success is again and again uh, promising. So I think it's a very difficult question you ask and put everybody to think think that. I think it's a, it's very it's different. No, no, it's unfair. Yeah. yeah, it's almost unfair. But uh, that's the thing. So when I was asked this question. Uh, I was, I think, 23 years old at that time, and uh, my father is a civil, was a civil, civil servant. He's, he's a direct civil servant now. So, you know, I I had been brought up in an environment where money was never enough, and you know, it was more important to be respectful than respectable than have money. So, my definition of success at that time was that I want to have one car, which I defined as the car which would have an air conditioner and a diggy. So it was equivalent of a Toyota Corolla. Money that I could send my kids, if I had a son, to send him to Itzen College and a daughter to send to Lahore Grammar School. And um, I mean, that was pretty much it. Everything else I thought, you know, if I have these two variables checked, then everything else would be taken care of. The problem was that in five years, I had already done that. <laughs> so. And yes, the problem is, and sir, the problem is that you keep on asking for more and more. And, but that's the trap. And for me, one of the big things about success is uh, knowing when to stop. Because, you know, you can have the entire world to yourself and still keep on wanting more. And you'll feel bad about yourself. And you will not have the time to, to be free in mind to really work on things and to really think about things which you really love. Uh, so I know it's extremely difficult and these are one of some of the personal failings that we all do. Uh, but yes, only difficult things make us better people. Anyway, so that was a lesson of life I thought I'll, I'll share with you. Um, another thing I want to do with you guys um, today is um, to talk about risk. Uh, one of the key things I have learned so far in my life um, is that if you don't take a risk, uh, you will not create in disruptive success. And uh, I have done that in a couple of times in my life. I have not taken risks at times that I, not, you know, in hindsight, I think I should have taken that risk. But whenever I have taken a risk, um, net net it pays off. So um, what I would also like you to think of is one career risk that you are evaluating right now, these days. And a decision that you have to take in next, let's say, one week or one month, what's that? Just take one minute for yourself to really clarify that risk in your mind. And once you do that, if you feel comfortable speaking up about it for the rest of us, do that. And if you don't, that's fine. But let's do that because that will really help you also in, in your success. So um, taking a risk in your, in your career, or you know, for example, if you're doing a job and you think you know, there's a business idea I should follow, it's a risk you, that you want to take. Uh, or you're doing a job and you know that there is another opening which is coming up in your organization, which is a new job and nobody knows what will happen with it. But it could be exciting. Should you take that or you should not take that? You know? So th these are r risky adventures that you, you have in, uh, with you. What's the risk that you're evaluating right now to take in next week, next one month, or so on and so forth, which is right now immediate, which is scaring you? Right? Can you think of that just in your mind and clarify what is the choice which is in front of you? Sure. Is that clear for everybody else also? Do you guys want to do it? Sure. What's scaring you? What is it that you really want to do, but it still scares you? Of course. Of course. But specifically, what is that challenge? 
generally fear of failure we all have right fear of failure fear of death fear of you know being alone and so on and so forth but that one specific decision that you have to take in next one week next one month something which is very near term But the, the, a this is a very specific question. Is anyone in the room thinking about doing something in the next four weeks which scares the hell out of them? I know I, I know I am. <laughs> For sure, absolutely. I think I'm also going to do something in yeah. the next four weeks. Yeah. Which is going to be a tough call. Yeah. Tough call, guys. That's what it is about. So I'll tell you something about my personal life. Uh, one of the decisions that I took. I used to be based in Dubai, part of Coca-Cola Middle East. I was having a great life. Um, and uh, an opportunity came by in Pakistan, uh, which meant that my net saving had to be reduced by 80%. Uh, living in Dubai. It was also giving me an opportunity to also spend a couple of years there and maybe perhaps apply for immigration to uh, Canada, Australia. So, you know, th there was a life path that many people take and I was thinking that perhaps I will take that. But I took a decision that I will not go for developed markets. I will make my career in developing markets only and therefore I came back to Pakistan, uh, which was a very risky decision at that time. It was a very difficult decision. Uh, there was clearly I cut my earnings by 80%, but with the promise of future growth. So, you know, some decision like this, which is clearly there is a risk associated and there's a reward associated. And you have to take a decision, you can't sit on the fence. Sure, so this, is, this was a decision. Obviously, there, there are many people who don't take the decision as well. They, they go on the other side, but the question is not right now what I did. What I did is done. But the, sure, so, but what's important, to, if you're, so what's important, what, what I want to encourage you to think is realize what scares you, what has a clear downside and a clear upside and a decision that you have to take in next one week, next four weeks, which is very near term, so that you can understand that there is a risk and you have to take a decision. And only taking big decisions make people great, right? So identify for yourself where the decision is, and then, so anyway, so this point is I think made, uh, we'll move on to the next, we'll made, move on to the next thing. Um, so overcoming your fear, taking, you know, taking a risk, um, this was the second key learning that I have had during my career. There's a last thing that I want to talk about, um, and uh, then I'll pass the mic to uh, the next speaker. Uh, this is about being happy. Uh, so um, many of us are, when I talk to, let's say, people around my friends, uh, people I work with, you know, generally if you ask people, uh, how is your job, uh, you know, people will start complaining. So, <laughs> so this is a phenomenon that, you know, most of us generally go through. We are unhappy as a lot. And come to think of it, right, most of us, firstly, alhamdulillah, we are able-bodied. Uh, we are, Allah has given us minds which can think. Uh, Generally, there are so many things to be thankful about, right? Uh, but we are still unhappy. <laughs> so there is a major issue with us. Um, and what kind of success you can have if you are unhappy as a person? It's meaningless. Uh, so um, again, um, it's very wishy-washy. It's very vague. Uh, but what I will request uh, you is that um, just 
identify for yourself something that you have done in the last one month or one week, last one day, which has really made you happy at your workplace. That's the filter. At your workplace. Or let me put it another way. What's that one thing other than money <laughs> which inspires you to come to work? It could also be a beautiful girl in your office, that's fine. <laughs> or handsome men. That's why I come to office because I am the handsome man many people come for. <laughs> and humble too. Yes, one has to live with that. <laughs> yes, sir. Diversity. Yes, great point. I would, I would say the challenge of creating something new or something different, that is what makes you happy. In a way, entrepreneurship, which we talked about. Uh, I think for me, it's more about the interaction with different people, different ideas, and what people need them. Those are what makes me most fun, what makes me most fun, what makes me most fun, what Exactly. So I think what we're hearing is that you know, people have different drivers of coming to office or coming to their work. And uh, realizing you know, that what motivates you is, is perhaps one of the most important things. Because you can always work towards a goal which is like 10 years down, but you know what? 10 years down means that 3,650 days you have to work, and you're not going to be able to keep yourself motivated for those 10 years if what you do every day doesn't uh, make you feel that you know, it's worth it. Uh, and generally, those things are not something which is which are grand. Uh, Pakistan ki ke kaam kar rahe hai, you know that doesn't inspire you every day. Uh, what really makes a difference is the people that you work with, um, the achievement that you have at the end of the day, um, the, this feeling that you know, yes, you know, I'm creating something great, or that I'm valued for what what, what I do. So these. Little motivations are the ones which mostly inspire people. So knowing what motivates you and then trying to also share that with the people around you so that they can help you become a better professional and a better human and also a happy person at work. Uh, a personal story for me is that um, I am generally very much happy uh, when I am working with a new idea. And I was asked a question uh, that, uh, how do you feel working for Coca-Cola? And I've been with this company for 12 very long years. <laughs> um, so in 12 years, I have stuck with this company because almost every day I'm working on an idea which is new and fresh. And I have many of my colleagues also sitting here. And uh, that's what I love, um, creating new ideas and working on something which is different and uh, something that I will feel proud to share with my friends and family. Um, actually, you know, many times we are itching for the campaign to release so that we can also share on our Facebook uh, wall so that you know we can take pride in it. So that's the kind of stuff which inspires me. And I know that the day, for example, this is taken away, um, uh, that, that ability, that freedom to create, uh, that is the day. Perhaps I will say, no, no, it's 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 not for me. Um, so. Three lessons uh, which have helped me, um, and I did not know them day one in my career. Uh, I have slowly and steadily realized that these things are are happening. These are the things that I will um, that that I will leave you with, and hopefully they can help you in some way. Uh, the first one is uh, have your own definition of success. Especially the easiest one is to is the material definition of success, saying that but whatever it is, at that time, uh, stop yourself from want, trying to want more. The second thing is, know that there is no great career, no great you know, you know, business which is achieved without having to take difficult decisions. 
Um, so know what the decision is and take it. Don't sit on the fence for too long. Uh, and the third thing is know what makes you happy every day and really live that person which is a happy person. There's one question and then perhaps we can close. Yeah. Yeah. So um, at least for me, I can uh, I can answer. Um, I don't come to office um, just because there is uh, you know a salary at the end of the month, uh, which is coming in. Uh, as I just described, that I like working in this organization for the job because it gives me the freedom to create something, um, and that's more important for me. And obviously, money is uh, a hygiene factor. Uh, but what really inspires me to do a good job um, and take a lot of shit from many people <laughs> is because at the end of the day I get to do nice creative stuff. Good. Thank you very much guys. Thank you very much.